So hello everyone, I am ready to give the test for new division 2.3. So the first question is an image as well as a clinical question of 40 year old complaints of constant watering discharge from left eye. On pressing the area between the nose and the eye, regurg material was seen. Now this, by this only, some question can be asked, what is the diagnosis? Regurg material seen, this is a regurgitation test that is positive in dacrocystitis. Now it cannot be acute dacrocystitis because in acute dacrocystitis you should not press on this area. So mostly the answer is chronic dacrocystitis which is causing watering and discharge. And the, it is written the patient was posted for surgery under antibiotic cover. So it is a chronic dacrocystitis. What surgery? Dacryocystorhinostomy. The question is which structure is of importance? So this is an anatomical as well as clinical question. This is the left orbit. This is the frontal bone D. This is sphenoid bone greater wing lesser wing. This is the optic canal. This is the superior orbital fissure. This is the lateral wall zygomatic bone in the floor as well. This is the M maxillary lacrimal ethmoid. And in the medial wall there is body of sphenoid as well. Four walls. So which structure is broken down in DCR operation? You have to make an opening between the lacrimal sac and the rhino nose in the middle meatus of the nose maxillary and lacrimal is broken down and that is the answer over here A is the answer that is lacrimal bone so you should know first what is the scenario showing second you should know about the bones of the orbit and you should know in DCR operation which bones are broken down that is the first question answer A that is lacrimal bone. Now is the text uh, a factual question but still you should know this a fibrovascular growth of the conjunctiva over the cornea mostly in people working outdoors means increase ultraviolet rays exposure that is it can be both pinguincula and pterygium due to increase UV uh, rays exposure but pinguincula the English word means pinging like a fat fatty deposition in the bulbar conjunctiva it is not fibrovascular growth fibrovascular growth is pterygium that is the answer over here what is panis panis also grows progress over the cornea but that is seen in trachoma infiltration plus vascularization not related to working outdoors that's a trachoma pellucid degeneration is not of your level it is a inferior thinning of the cornea it's a degeneration corneal ectasia condition thinning of the cornea in the inferior that is pellucid degeneration Answer over here is pterygium. What is the most common cause of vision uh, decrease in pterygium? It is growing over the cornea. It changes the surface of the cornea causing astigmatism. Initially, horizontal axis it grows. It makes the horizontal axis flatter. So vertical becomes steeper. Means initially with the rule astigmatism, later irregular astigmatism. That is the most common cause. And pterygium excision has to be done with autoconjunctival graft. Adjoint is mitomycin C drug to prevent recurrence. But the surgery is excision with autoconjunctival graft. Now lack of thalamus due to dysfunction of its structure. What is this? Lateral view of the upper eyelid where E is not asked but still it is uh, levator palpebral superioris muscle attaching at the tarsus, anterior tarsus. C is the aponeurosis of the levator palpebral muscle. D is the upper tarsal muscle originating from the LPS and up into upper tarsal that is molar muscle. A is the orbital septum. B is the orbicularis muscle. Now lack of thalamus is inability to close the eye in primary gaze. So which muscle closes the eye? That is orbicularis. To do 7 the palsy, orbicularis muscle is not working. So B is the answer over here leading to lack of thalamus. But many students get confused and so what is the difference between lack of thalamus and lid lag sign. Lid lag sign is not in primary gaze. This is the eyeball. I have told you in the previous uh, test as well. This is the eyeball. This is the eyelid. When the patient looks down, the eyelid follows because levator muscle relaxes and follows. If it does not follow in down gaze, the eyelid is not following the eyeball. Lid lag sign. It is lagging behind. That is lid lag sign in down gaze. Can be seen in congenital symptosis and thyroid eye disease. Here, lack of thalamus due to orbicularis weakness. B is the answer over here. Seven the palsy. Now, again, a clinical question. You should know the diagnosis first and what to do. 18-year-old frequent change of glasses, best corrected vision 6-6 with 
spherical and cylinder means myopic astigmatism is there now astigmatism is quite high myopic astigmatism frequent change of glasses something in the cornea is going on something is the cornea going on no abnormality seen in the cornea no abnormality was seen strange no other abnormality in any structure so why would you do ultrasound b scan when you see when you can see entire eyeball structures there is no need of b scan it is b scan is done only for posterior segment evaluation in media opacities like in vitreous hemorrhage retina is not seen then you do this in dense cataract the vitreous is not seen retina is not seen then you do this so that is ruled out what is the diagnosis here frequent change of glasses in a young patient with myopic astigmatism cornea is absolutely normal there is no structural initially in keratoconus cornea looks normal later on you can have that uh, vox stria so means no structural abnormality is there cornea is thin that is not seen on slit lamp that is seen by pachymetry so you have to know the thickness you have to know the curvature of the cornea you have to know the surface and that is topography topography gives you the surface of the cornea and there is an investigation known as pentacam also one more ob scan which will give you thickness surface curvature 3 in 1 that is the investigation of choice so cornea topography has to be done why scraping there is no infection here no many people must have write, written corneal scraping thinking the cornea looking normal and uh, acanthamoeba cornea looks normal but the patient has pain man symptom more signs less that is contact lens history or swimming pool history tap water uh, contact lens history uh, signs are uh, less symptoms are more but symptoms has to be there now of infection painful pain is there in uh, infection acanthamoeba what do you want to do scraping and corneal sensation is no reason in keratoconus now this is a repeat question now this is a repeat question you should know you should not make many mistake in repeat uh, previous year question now this is a vertical axis is focused in point number b horizontal is focused at point number f they are not focused at a single point so there is astigmatism the question is if the retina is assumed at point number a both the focus points are behind means it is compound hypermotopic astigmatism i know many people must have got this right but they must have not written uh, got this very easy thing with the rule against the rule what is the definition vertical axis steeper is with the rule so see over here now vertical is focused on b horizontal is focused at point number f which is focused in more in front of course the vertical is focused more in front means vertical has to be more steeper axis the converging power of vertical is more over here that's why it is focused more in front that is the answer compound hypermetropic astigmatism with the rule is the answer over here now you should not make many mistake you don't have to cram previous year questions this was stoom's conoid question was asked okay fine so this is the cone right this is a stoom's stoom's principle is for astigmatism but you can be asked question like this if the retina is point number a what is the astigmatism any point if you have the retina it is with the rule only because it is given vertical is focused in front of the horizontal it has to be with the rule but if the retina is at point number g then it is compound myopic astigmatism with the rule if the retina is point number d then it is mixed astigmatism with the rule so here the answer is d now extraocular muscle which is the adductor theoretical action adductor but has a maximum elevation in abducted position of the eye so when the eyeball goes into abducted position particularly 23 degree abducted position it gets aligned to superior rectus and inferior rectus in that sr is a maximum elevator and ir is a maximum depressor and yes sr is a adductor yes but theoretically if only one muscle is working that's a theoretical action anatomical action but the clinical or the practical action is in abducted position it's a maximum elevator that's the answer superiorus you cannot solve squint questions by theoretical actions you have to solve squint questions like i tell in the uh, class also by the cross the by practical application of muscles so which muscle is a maximum elevator in adducted position of the eye in adducted 51 degree adducted position the eyeball gets aligned to so and io so is a pure depressor and io is a pure elevator iio all right not diagnosis over here lack of thumbnails i told you is a inability of the eye to close in primary gaze there is nothing over here written that patient is asked to close eyes it is just shown there is a repeat question there is a addition between the upper and the lower eyelid that is known as ankylobilefron cryptophthalmos is complete closure of the eyeball with the eyelids that is complete failure of separation of eyelids i hope you know the eyelids fuse then they separate if they completely does not separate it is cryptophthalmos if they partial separate it is ankylobilefron 
and epicanthus is a fold of skin coming from the upper eyelid in some patients. Here it is, and chyloblepharon is the repeat question over here. Now, many people know this, this child, big eyes, maybe congenital glaucoma, bophthalmos, but very simple thing you don't understand is epiphora is a word for increased watering due to obstruction in the lacrimal operators. There is no obstruction in the lacrimal operators in this. The classical triad which the mother says, I hope, and, and I say all the time, but father also says, if mother allows, sometimes. Mother says, my child has watering, increased watering of eyes. That is because of increased intraocular pressure and the child cannot look into the normal light, that is photophobia. And he squeezes his eyes, that is blepharospasm. So triad is watering, photophobia, blepharospasm. And because of photophobia, there is increased reflex watering of the eyes. And that is the answer over here. Epiphora is ruled out. So A option is ruled out, D option is ruled out. Now glare is a symptom that is intolerance to bright light. Here it is intolerance to normal light, the child cannot look into the tube light. That is the answer, watering, blepharospasm and photophobia. That is congenital glaucoma, bupthalmos, axial myopia, can be of habstria, deep anterior chamber, flat lens, increased cup disc ratio which can be reversible, treatment of choice, goniotomy. If the, if the cornea is hazy, then a trabeculotomy. And if the option C is a very old question, I don't know why people unnecessarily uh, gets confused by these questions. Very old question is if trabeculectomy plus trabeculotomy is given the options, that is of course a better answer because that's a combined surgery. That's a better answer than goniotomy, better answer than trabeculotomy. But a single to be chosen, a single surgery of choice in congenital glaucoma is removal of the Barkan's membrane because that is causing the blockage. That is goniotomy. But if the cornea is hazy, you cannot see the angle of the anterior chamber, then trabeculotomy is breaking the Schlem's canal. That's the answer. Now, uh, this was also recently asked. Thick glasses, childhood, sudden decrease visual acuity. Sudden decrease visual acuity, what to rule out? Lacquer cracks is the cracks of the Brooks membrane. That is a sign seen in picture, not going to be asked, but cracks of the Brooks membrane, sign seen in high myopia. Posterior cephaloma is a sign that is bulging of the posterior part of the sclera around the optic disc. That is a sign seen in high myopia. They will not cause any uh, decreased vision like in this. Now, lacquer cracks can have some uh, bleeding behind the retina, subretinal hemorrhage. But here there is no glow. Visual acuity less, anterior segment can be viewed, no glow. No glow means the doctor cannot see the retina. No red glow is there. If the doctor cannot see the retina, how retina detachment can uh, be the answer? Thick glasses might be uh, uh, a patient is high myopia. Here is straight away answer vitreous hemorrhage because if there is absence of red glow. That's why the retina cannot be seen. And that's the answer. That's why ultrasound B scan should be done next to know whether retina is detached or not. But here classically if there, there is absence of red glow, vitreous hemorrhage. And how can vitreous hemorrhage occur? If there is a high myopia, there can be posterior vitreous detachment. There is a areas of reti very thin retina known as lattice degeneration which can have holes and vitreous uh, while detaching can cause uh, the tears or uh, retina holes which can lead to vitreous hemorrhage. Which will, the doctor cannot see the retina because of the vitreous hemorrhage. There is absence of the red glow. That is the answer over here. High myopia and vitreous hemorrhage. Now, ED's pupil is a unilateral dilated pupil because of ciliary ganglion lesion, idiopathic lesion. And if for example, if the right pupil is dilated, left is normal. There is an isochoria. But if you see this in dark condition, both will dilate. So there is no anisochoria. But in light, there is constriction of the normal. ADs cannot constrict because ciliary ganglion is having lesion. But in near, both people will constrict because of accommodation fibers are spared. That's why there is light near dissociation, there is, which is true. This is false. There is light near dissociation means patient, uh, uh, the pupil does not constrict to light but constrict to near. And anisochoria is more in light conditions. That is the answer over here. Lesion is an ipsilateral ciliary ganglion. And one pistol person pilocarpin. Now everyone should know that diluted pilocarpin can constrict ADS people because of super sensitivity. If diluted pilocarpin can constrict, of course, one person also can be constricting uh, ADS people. One person can constrict a normal people, yes. Diluted pilocarpin cannot constrict a normal people. But diluted pilocarpin can constrict a ADS people because of super sensitivity. The post ganglionic fibers become hypersensitive. 
the entire world only diluted palo carpen can constitute only one people it is but that does not mean one person cannot constrict one person can constrict it is of course Legion ipsilateral, anisocoria is more in light condition, normal will constrict, but this cannot constrict. That is the answer over here. Anisocoria more in light conditions. Horner's pupil anisocoria more in dark conditions. Argal Robertson pupil, when the lesion is bilateral pretractal, there is both meiotic people, there is no anisocoria. There also there is light near dissociation, but Argal Robertson is a bilateral pretractal lesion, bilateral meiotic pupil, no anisocoria. Constrict with light, uh, does not constrict with light, but constrict with near, with near because pretectal nucleus is not involved in near pathway. So answer over here is, of course, the C. That's the 10 questions. I hope you have done well. I know many people have done well. I know many people have done mistakes. I've told you which mistakes. I hope you will not repeat. Now, this is just a learning. Try not to repeat such mistakes in the main exam. Main exam is coming. Like winter is coming. Main exam is also coming. I hope you know that. Thank you for listening. Best wishes.